Well, what we're really looking at when we think about Native communities in these states or others um, is really uh, the reality of historical inequities um, and the failure of the federal government to uphold some really tr critical treaty obligations um, through a period of, of decades, really. Um, you know, these treaty obligations provide for things like health care and other services. Um, and now when we have indigenous communities, they're all grappling with situations like what you've heard, um, you know, poor performance in educational arenas, um, struggles in the economic area, and of course, um, pre-existing health conditions that only exacerbate the effects of COVID-19. So let's touch more on that because the infection and mortality rates are extremely high for Native Americans. Uh, explain why. Well, again, I think we're really looking at systemic issues here. Um, when we think about pre-existing conditions, which we know is one of the major reasons um, that the virus presents in such a severe way in individuals, um, we have to remember that indigenous communities have uh, disproportionately high rates of things like diabetes, heart disease, and so on. Um, that is a direct cause of the history of this country where native peoples were removed from their historic homelands, um, forced to eat new foods that were oftentimes unhealthy and we've just created this system um, where native people you know oftentimes have poor health and also have ongoing access problems to receive adequate health care um, in many reservation communities it's common for native people people to struggle with transportation issues um, to healthcare facilities, and also simple things for sanitation, which we know is key for COVID, um, such as running water um, and electricity, even staying up to date with, with the news through something like internet um, is oftentimes out of reach for indigenous communities in this country. And vaccines uh, have been kind of distributed kind of unevenly all across the country. What are you seeing when it comes to the Native American population and, and rollouts uh, on reservations? Well, what we're seeing when it comes to tribal communities and COVID vaccines um, is really amazing, right? What we see is that um, in many states, tribes are actually outpacing um, the state governments in terms of distribution. And we even see some cases where tribes are distributing vaccines to non-tribal members, people that may have no connection to the tribe through employment or any other reason. Um, but simply because they are a community member, um, the tribe will provide a vaccination for them. What that really comes down to for me is an example of tribal sovereignty at its best, right? These are tribal communities who are taking control and doing what they need to do for their community. And we need to remember that indigenous peoples are integrated into our larger society in this country. So we see them taking care of their non-native uh, neighbors as well.